Thanks, Simon. But sobering thoughts, Grace. <laughs> and I guess um, the process of us going through and prioritising what are our key risks and then making sure that we stick to some firm biosecurity principles and, and ensure that we do try and minimise those risks for our industry here. So it can sound really scary, but there's a whole lot of background processes going in to try and help mitigate those. So a small vote of confidence, I guess, as we go. Um, so what, as Simon said, what I uh, did take the opportunity to do when I was on my way over to Europe to the IKO conference was stop in at the States and, and visit uh, three different research labs um, and out in the field so that I could have an opportunity to just uh, see what work was going on there uh, with both Spotted Land and Fly and BMSB and specifically around the work with the Samurai Wasp um, development as a biocontrol and, and then bring those thoughts back to, to here. So I'll start with the Spotted Land and Fly because that's the one that we've been talking about so far and um, as was mentioned the preferred host is the Tree of Heaven and, and in Penn, uh, Pennsylvania there's an awful lot of these and especially along railway sidings and, and in big woodland areas because it was born in as an ornamental uh, plant. It feeds on a huge number of plants and, and one of those that's key in the States is, is in vineyards on, on the grapevine. So uh, pierces and sucking mouth parts and it can actually work its way through the bark um, and into the phloem of the tree and, and getting its nutritional uh, source from that. And then at the same time as it's doing that, it's very efficient in its uh, system in that it sucks it in and then just spits it straight out again as honeydew on the other side. And you stand under these trees and you, you, you're literally getting shattered on, excuse the term, but you know, this honey juice just flowing down and I had my phone out taking pictures and it was just getting sticky, you know, as I was doing it. So it's, it's quite incredible and, and quite scary. And as you can see here, um, the honey dew also attracts other th bees and things that like that, that sweet uh, thing. So th this is on um, Atlantis tree on the, on the uh, tree of heaven and you can see the sooty mould that's sitting there on those leaves, you know, it, it was quite incredible and just massive numbers. And when uh, we were talking about where they lay eggs and liking to lay them on inanimate objects, so these tree of heaven, as I said, were down a whole lot of railway sidings and, and so sitting there is all of these trained um, f carriages and we were one week away from laying season for uh, these, pl these pests and so you know the states have put in these huge quarantine programs to try and prevent the spread of spotted land and fly from state to state but here were these things sitting in the sidings and, and you know in two or three weeks time they could have egg masses on them and then get shifted from state to state carrying freight around so for me you know it was just a very salient lesson on thinking practically about how to apply quarantine so they're stopping trucks you know, all of the trucking companies have to be inspected and approved, and yet here in the railway system there was potential for moving them around, so scary thoughts. So th this is just a picture of the, the probe, you can just see it sitting there on the fingernail, and, and so we went um, out with Julie, who's um, an evolutionary biologist, so she was actually studying behaviour patterns of the spotted lanternfly to try and learn more about them and potentially also work towards what biocontrols could be done. So th they were doing some um, host preference trials and they had these little tents set up in the paddocks and they would put um, tree of heaven plants and then a variety of other plants in there to just see how they would land on them and they did have a kiwi fruit in there but unfortunately it was a very young uh, one and it had lots of furry stuff on it and so I don't think it was kind of a good example of what uh, could be used but it certainly there weren't many la landing on it compared to the tree of heaven in this particular uh, field experiment and it was only the first week so there's no results that have come out from it so far. Collecting samples is pretty simple. You just go to the tree of heaven, get a big net and slide it up and they all fall in. And we were collecting four or five hundred in ten minutes, you know, so it was pretty easy um, to be able to do that. Um, they're starting to do some work around traps, so there is no lure, as mentioned, for us to be able to actually pull them in. So they, they do like to crawl up on the bark of trees, so just a simple net process where they would crawl up and get into the top uh, was some of the work that they were doing, um, trying to be able to get traps, and as was mentioned the other way, was putting sticky bands right around a tree, so as they crawl up, especially the younger stages of a life cycle, they just get 
physically stuck on there. And then the other method they were doing is scraping eggs off to try and control them that way. They were also starting to do some work um, around trying to understand how they had a nutritional impact on the, on the grapevine trees. Um, so they were, had put probes inside um, the tree that were measuring flow of um, nutritional elements and then in these big nets that were surrounded the vine were putting small numbers, medium numbers and large numbers of spotted lanternfly in there and then we're going to be measuring the relative impacts on those plants over a period of time. As I say, it was pretty early as well for that work so we haven't had any results come out of that. Uh, I visited another lab where they were doing a lot of work on biocontrol, especially BMSB, um, but they were also working on trying to see whether they could develop a biocontrol agent for spotted lanternfly. Got a couple of potential options there, but a long way from working out how specific they are to the spotted lanternfly or whether they're going to work uh, in a wide-ranging way. This is quite an interesting photo. This was the female just prior to laying eggs, so they get a really large yellow kind of underbelly, which is where all the egg masses are, are sitting. And we saw a lot of um, the spotted lanternfly at this stage, because as I say, we were about a week away from them starting to lay eggs. And we did visit a, a vineyard, um, and this was the impact on some of the vines from the previous season, where they'd had this massive influx of, of the spotted lanternfly. Um, literally sucked the nutrition out of the vines and, and were killing them in large numbers. And you can see here them all sitting up on there. And this is last season's egg mass sitting on the strainer post um, at, at the end of each of the vines. So certainly a, a massive impact in, in Pennsylvania for that. So just quickly um, work through some of the stuff where I visited around the rearing facilities for BMSB and also um, they were rearing the Trisulcus japonicus, the samurai wasp, with a view to seeing how well they could get large colonies of the wasps to develop and then release them out into the wild to see whether they would reduce BMSB numbers out in the field. So pretty easy to grow in a lab environment. I was quite surprised. You just went in there and they had these little net cages and they put in some food in there and put the eggs in and um, hundreds of the BMSB would hatch out um, all crawling around in here. This is some of the egg masses sitting there ready to hatch. And then the first um, stages, the young hatched out here and all jumping around on some beans and, and feeding quite effectively. So provided the, there was a high level of humidity in the lab, they were able to very successfully rear the BMSB. The same with the samurai wasp, so this is parasitised BMSB eggs uh, where they have then hatched out and, and this is a jar full of adults and they can keep the adults in the lab quite successfully for up to six months provided they've got a food source um, there for them and so each of these little pottles here have got a whole lot of the samurai wasps sitting in quite waiting for ready for release. They also were able to rear them on frozen BMSB eggs, uh, which is quite useful for uh, potentially being able to use it in New Zealand because if they're frozen, then they're non-viable. So we might be able to use that as a method of rearing the samurai wasp here. So out in the field, we would, uh, went and had a look and seeing how it could actually be managed in the field. So they're using these sticky card uh, with a pheromone lure to try and attract uh, the BMSB in and combining that with ghost traps where they just had a post with a net that was covered in insecticide. So the lure would draw them towards this. It, it's not a thing like a fruit fly lure where it actually captures everything, it draws them into the area. They then go onto the net and, and get killed by the insecticide. So they were finding that combining uh, that methodology with the samurai wasp, they were starting to get uh, quite big reductions in numbers of, of BMSB and a reasonably effective control. So there was a field try going on about how to release the wasp into the field. So what they would do is measure the abundance of BMSB initially to see if they had reached a, a critical level. Uh, then they would put out uh, combinations of parasitised eggs and adult wasps into the field. And then they would put sentinel BMSB egg masses up in the trees and measure whether they then became parasitised to assess the efficacy of this process. Um, oh, look at that. Um, it wasn't that effective in this particular field trial, but in some of the other areas it was starting to get uh, bigger numbers. And they also uh, stuck to the see it, snap it, catch it uh, methodology that we use here in New Zealand. So obviously it's, it's pretty international. So very quick process through that, but happy to answer any questions during the break later on if we need. Thank you.